I was going to talk about something different this week, but this just dropped in my lap, just about literally. I picked up the mail a couple of days ago, and in it was an envelope that had a return address in Mississauga. And I was thinking, who do I know in Mississauga? I don't know anybody. Who in Mississauga would be addressing an envelope with just my first, with just my initial on the first name? Yeah, anybody random sending me an envelope like that would have my actual name on there. Uh, certainly, uh, anything from uh, any companies I deal with, they have my actual name. So that was the first question. What's this, this, this about? You know. Uh, then uh, I opened it up. I pulled it out, and there's a letter that's looking semi-official. And I started looking through it, and uh, instantly it was clear there was something wrong with it. Like, the grammar was atrocious. The, uh, everything was just dreadful. Uh, it had all the things you would expect from some sort of official communication, but there was words misspelled all over the place, like right in the bit where it said, Reference number. It said your reference number, not your. Yeah, it's uh, you know something that you should catch when you proofread. And since you know this sort of thing it looks like it's probably a form letter of some kind, you would think that they would have proofread the form, but apparently not. And then all through it, you know, there's different font sizes, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, there's apostrophes where there shouldn't be. There's words that are thrown in that look like they should just uh, be thrown away again because uh, they just make the writer look like an idiot, uh, or certainly illiterate. Uh, so the, the whole thing reads like, uh, like an illiterate person trying to sound educated. Uh, or at the very least, uh, the, the same errors that you would expect from uh, an English as a second language person trying to sound official. Uh, you know, I, I'll put up the uh, letter here and we'll just scan through it quickly uh, along with the basic, basic fact checking that you can do to uh, uh, verify that it's uh, legitimate or not. Uh, so I'll put that up and uh, we'll read through it and you'll be able to see just how bad it is. So uh, without further ado, I'll do just that. So here's the letter. Okay, so here's the uh, letter uh, as I received it. Here's the uh, first bit of it. You can see at the top um, up here that uh, it looks semi-official uh, until you observe the uh, formatting of the telephone numbers. Uh, it's missing a uh, punctuation mark there and typically if you're sending uh, North, uh, you know, phone numbers within North America you leave off the one. So that's definitely uh, a red flag. Uh, the fact is an urgent and personal letter, and you can see that this urgent and personal letter heading is mixed up with this other stuff here. So uh, now you might see that potentially in a professional thing if they uh, if it uh, needed that to uh, fit in a fixed space, but normally they just go on to page two in that case. Uh, you can see here we've got an immediate error, your instead of your for on the reference number line. So uh, that's another clear indicator. The date formatting is a bit off. Um, and it's just the last name here, Dear Astle. Uh, you, you would normally use the person's first name or their whole name. Um, whoops. So uh, and then you get to the text of it here. And uh, you can see, you know, I'll just scan through this here. It says, I am an accountant and independent underwriting. That's all already obviously wrong. Uh, what's an independent underwriting? Um, you can use that as a noun, but it doesn't make sense in that context. 
Then it says, I work for one of the offshore financial institutions here in United States. There's yet another error, in United States. You don't say that, it's in the United States. Uh, so, and it goes on in that kind of vein here. Uh, and then you've got here, you know, this last thing here. Take a look at this here too. It might not be clear to you, but that's a lowercase l. It's not the letter I. Um, and that occurs again later on in the letter. So, you know, it's almost like this was uh, scanned from some other source and then uh, reprinted. Um, anyway, uh, it says, nevertheless, I has contacted you with genuine intentions. And again, you got bad grammar there because has doesn't go with I. Um, and then it goes on. Uh, I keep bumping the mouse wheel there. Um, he he got my contact information somehow uh, uh, related to some guy I've never heard of called James Astle, who's apparently a Canadian citizen, whom lived in, here in the United States. Whom lived? No, that's wrong. Uh, that I can't think of a single case off the top of my head where whom would be used as a subject of a verb, ever. It's an objective pronoun. It should never, uh, never show up like that. Uh, so you got all this and then you know we get on here our financial institution uh, apparently called claim department uh, now who would name their financial institution claim department that's just stupid uh, they've issued some sort of a notice uh, something that doesn't make any sense um, we got randomly capitalized words here his 10 estate uh, we got some mention of treasury division related to unclaimed funds, which uh, is probably conflating a uh, rule related to banking with something else. Uh, but how about this? Life insurance masterpiece fixed deposits. Uh, masterpiece, really? What's that doing there? And why would you have fixed deposits and life insurance in the same thing? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Then we go on. He says something about tracking last names and databases and finding immediate family members and proving unsuccessful, a whole bunch of stuff like that. And then uh, he wants to somehow uh, assist, me to assist in repatriation of the funds. Um, yeah, uh, okay. So that's starting to sound like the Nigerian scam with that prince with 10, 10 figures of money that needs to get it out of the country. Um, okay. Um, uh, and apparently he's going to represent that he believes that I'm an extended relative of this James guy. And uh, because my last name's the same and all of that, um, he can somehow make all of this work and release it to me legally as the beneficiary. Now, the question I have at this point is what's in it for this guy uh, to do this? Clearly, he wants something or there's something in it for him or he just let the money ride or he'd pretend to be the beneficiary himself. Now, again, apparently there's no risk involved and they have to mention no litigation or order for a DNA test. Um, okay, why would you have to mention that? And apparently he's worked out all modalities to complete the process successfully. I don't even know what a modality is. So, uh, yeah, it, and maybe that's what they're used banking on, that the average person won't know what a modality is, be, and they'll just chalk it up to being a legal term, and they'll just assume that it's valid. It's not. Um... Uh, if it is, it doesn't have any business in this type of a solicitation, even if this were legitimate. Um, he mentions using a notary and uh, some things like that, and that's just to make it seem more legitimate, I think, because notaries don't have any magic power to, make, to prove that things are, are above board. All they do is basically uh, certify things as true copies and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, witness signatures and so on. Um, and he wants to finish it within 14 banking days, which is roughly three weeks, uh, if you assume that banks don't work on weekends. In other words, he wants to deal with this fast. Uh, so, okay, that's another indication of a claim. If this was legitimate, there'd be no time limit on it. 
Uh, then he gives two email addresses, one of which is at the domain in the heading of the letter, and one of which is AOL.com. Well, he wouldn't need to give two if, uh, if he was legitimate, because his company domain would work. And again, we've got the misformatted phone number. It's the same fax number from the heading of the letter. Um, and he wants my name, address, occupation, phone, fax, email, and the reference number on the letter. Now, this is starting to look like he's not actually uh, trying to scam me out of any money, but instead is trying to scam me out of personal information that he can use to somehow obtain credit or something in my name. Um, you now, full name and address he could find with a little detective work, same with occupation, all of that, you know, it's, uh, that's fine. Uh, so, you know, uh, realistically, uh, he's not asking for anything crazy here, although occupation is certainly not needed. Uh, phone, fax, or email would come as a result of whatever medium of communication we're using, uh, and so on. But then he goes on to explicitly make it clear that he only wants to be contacted by email or fax. If this was legitimate, they would be expecting something, uh, probably some notarized copies of documents, uh, identification documents or something like that, physically delivered, or they would be coming here physically to see them. Uh, and a response by post would be perfectly legitimate, uh, as would a plain old telephone call. Uh, so... You know, that's another red flag. And then he has says something about bringing me into a detailed picture and description of the claim. Uh, there's that L again. Uh, he, uh, he, so he's doing everything he can to reassure me that this is legitimate uh, or insisting that it's legitimate. And then here's the, another mention, don't send, uh, don't send postal mail. Uh, okay. Um, okay, whatever. And then here's a really bogus looking signature. It may be legitimate, but it looks like someone took an image of a signature and squished it vertically. So uh, that's definitely questionable there. Um, and the signature block is set up all completely wrong. The kindest regard should be above the signature with the name below the signature. Okay. So that basically... That's basically the letter. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that we can do to check this. Whoop, wrong. Now, we can check the name of the company, and that's easy to do. So, what I'll do is I'll grab a web browser. Uh, why did it show up behind? Uh, okay. Now it's Maritime Investment and Consultant Inc. So we'll go into our friendly Google. Uh, Maritime Investment and Consultant Inc. Um, okay, nothing shows up here. Nothing obvious. Uh, GlobalMaritime.com, that's a different domain. Uh, Maritime Marine Consultants doesn't sound like it's legitimate. Uh, International Marine Consultants Limited doesn't seem legitimate. Clearwater Mar uh, Marine doesn't seem like it matches. Okay, so uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, the Maritime Group, a different domain. So it doesn't seem like this is all, this organization actually exists. Interesting. Well, what if we just check out the domain in the email, consultant.com? Okay. We'll put in consultant.com. Consultant.com, and we get here a typical domain parking, uh, free parking ads page that you get from typical registrars, and an inquire about this domain uh, link. Okay, so the domain isn't even valid. Uh, there's, there's no company website running there, which there would be, or, or at least nothing would be there. Okay, so that's questionable. Well, this here is enough to be pretty certain that the letter is not legitimate. Okay, good. 
There is one other thing we could do. We could check the actual domain registration. Now I did do that, but after discovering that the website's not valid, uh, you, you know, it's uh, pretty clear that there's no need to. Uh, the domain's registered to some uh, some random organization that uh, you know, their own domain doesn't work any better. So I'm thinking that the uh, registered organization is just a front for uh, either a domain squatter or something like that. So there you go. Uh, it's pretty clear. Uh, if you've read through this while I've been showing it to you, uh, I'm sure you've had a nice laugh about some of the uh, language in here. Uh, you know, like especially this last paragraph where the first letter of each line is capitalized, even if it's the middle of a sentence. Uh, a whole bunch of, uh, a lot of indicators. Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, so I'll uh, get back in front of the camera and, uh, and we can wrap this up. Okay, so that's the text of the letter, and as you can see, it's absolutely comical. Uh, it's pretty clear that it's not legitimate. Uh, you know, I don't know how somebody with ordinary intelligence would fall for that, and maybe most don't. Uh, but I'm sure enough people fall for it that it's worth the time for the scammers to spend uh, 70 cents or so uh, to send out each one, assuming they actually did pay the postage fee. Uh, there was no postmark, at least, or obvious postmark on the envelope. So it's entirely possible that the postage stamp on it is actually just printed on there. And the, uh, the envelope was just shoved into my mailbox uh, by somebody passing by. Um, I'm not going to assume that because I don't know how the Canada Post is operating its postage paid stuff, so it's hard to say. Uh, but uh, all I know is the stamp actually did kind of rub off of my finger, uh, which suggests it's printed on there like a regular toner. Uh, but anyway, if you want to avoid falling for these types of scams, you just have to keep in mind two things. One, if it doesn't seem quite professional, that's enough for all the red flags in the world. Or if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is too good to be true. And you should be suspicious. All you have to do is do some out-of-band checking, not relying on any of the contact information provided by the, the source that you're checking, just to verify its legitimacy. And as you saw, it didn't take much in this case. So anyway, I hope this has uh, left you a little bit wiser about scams. Uh, it doesn't matter what form they come in, the steps are the same, the same sort of uh, indicators uh, exist. So, hey, be wary and educate yourself. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching.